she sent me a picture of the exact pleat they're going for, which she's calling a weird goblet pleat. This is a natural fabric. So any irregular shadows or threads or slubs, that's just a natural part of a silk. So look how pretty that looks. No extra looping at all. And on the front, a lot less bite. Pretty. Okay, now it's on to the next step. Okay, I'm back here at the table and ready to table this drapery. That's what we call making the drapery, basically putting the three layers of fabric together. Um, sometimes it's just two layers, the face fabric and the lining. In this case, it's three layers with the lining, bump, and face fabric. So just putting all that together, getting the length in, putting in the side hems and the header, all of that is called tabling. So that's what we're doing here. And the first thing and most important thing to do is to make sure that you're starting at the right place on your table so that your finish length is correct and accurate. So I double checked my length from the zero line to my 112 line. The finish length is 112. Um, and it was a little bit off because sometimes these tabletops shift around depending on uh, what you were doing previously and how much you move things around and how much you vacuum it and stuff like that. So you always want to double check your length lines before you table a new project. So I did that already and then I put a pin right here at that mark so that I don't accidentally pin my fabric to a different line because there's so many lines you could easily be off by an inch or two if you are not careful. So now that I know that my line is good and I know which one to look at, I'm gonna start pinning this fabric. This is the silk face fabric with the face side down. So this is the back and I'll pin it down at that line. And also I'm gonna start with the edge, the selvage edge also on a line so that when I'm ready to turn the side hem three inches, it's gonna be easy for me to just follow that line right there. Um, so if I, you know, if I wasn't really paying attention where I put it and I put it in between a line, then I would have to measure that side hem and I don't wanna take any extra steps that are not necessary. Um, okay, so then the other thing is when I pin, I'm pinning at an angle so that when I smooth the fabric out, I'm not gonna move the fabric off of the line. So. Those are the first uh, few steps in getting this ready to start tabling before I add another layer, is pinning it down to the line and then I'll smooth it all out and get it all free of air pockets and bubbles and lint and all that stuff. So that's the first step. So you can see that I have the whole piece of fabric laying really flat and pinned down at the line, the 112 line. And then this selvage is lined up all the way even on this first line right here so that when I turn that side hem, it's gonna be nice and straight. And I'm gonna press the hem real quick before I get the next layer down. And then that's the leading edge over there where I have the extra face uh, facing for the leading edge side hem. So that's that side. So that means that this is a right panel because this is my return and that's the leading edge. And it's facing down, so you have to think of it a little bit backwards. Next step is the bump. Okay, so here we are with the next layer. This is the bump inner lining and the bottom edge has been surged. And so now I'm going to line it up about an inch above the bottom of this silk. And that's because we don't want it to peek through the layers and the lining is going to be about a half an inch up so we want the bump to be above the lining uh, just so we don't have any any of it peeking through maybe i'll go about a th three quarters of an inch from the edge so i'll just pin that into place 
smooth it out and then I'll get the lining on top. Looks like it's about an inch. I'm gonna keep it right there. And I'm gonna move these pins when I put the lining down, but that'll hold it in place for now. A wooden yardstick is essential in my opinion to get all of the bubbles and wrinkles out of a fabric when you're tabling. It's nice and flat because of my wooden yardstick. Okay, now the last layer is the lining. Okay, so now we want the lining to be face up with the wrong side down to sandwich all of the layers together. So I wanna make sure it's centered between the silk because it's not as wide as the silk. You could see the bump is hanging over on each side, so that part will get cut off. But for the lining, I have to center each end inside the silk. It already feels so amazing just by touching the back. I can tell the difference that that bump makes on the inside. Okay, so there's the three layers put together in the right order and in the right direction with the silk face down, bump on top, and lining face up. And so now I can start turning the side hems. So on this side, I'm gonna turn three inches. So I just count my um, lines on the table and each one is an, an inch. And then I can just turn on this line right here, pin that down and then press it with the iron and steam it. And then it's gonna give me a nice crisp edge right here. And then I'll cut out the excess bump and the lining can stay as is because there's there's not any sticking out. So I'm using my hands and you can also use a ruler on the inside to make sure that the lining gets folded all the way into the crease of the side hem. That looks good and you can see how straight it is by following the line on the table. Okay, so then the next step before I can double turn this side hem. That's what the double turn looks like. Um, I need to remove some of this bump because it's obviously it's sticking out, but also um, I don't want to leave, even if it was not sticking out, I don't want to leave all of that in there because it's going to be too bulky. So um, I'm going to determine if I want to cut it on this fold edge to take it out, all the way out of the side hem, or if I want to cut it down so that it's still in the first fold. And I'm thinking that's what I'm gonna like. So I'm going to play with it a little bit and then determine if that's the, the direction I'm gonna go. I'll probably draw a line so I can get a nice straight one and a half inch. So it's all the way into that fold. So that's the next step. Okay, I zoomed in a little bit because I made a decision. I'm using just this small ruler as a guide as to how much to cut off of the bump and I'm going to draw a line with this and then I already cut it down a little bit I'll cut some more off to show you and then that is the perfect amount once this is double turned that'll be right on the edge of the inside fold Look how pretty that lays and it's not too thick and it's not if I if I were to cut out all of the bump it's, it would be in my opinion um, a waste of the bump because you know the reason we're using it is to make this feel more luxurious so I want to have a little bit turned into the side hem but not to double fold it so that's the perfect amount and it's gonna go through the blind hammer even with all those layers inside. So that is the perfect amount to cut off is just using this as my straight edge. So now I'll just do the rest of it and then turn it. Okay, now I'm just gonna put some pins in place to hold it and then I, I like to pin parallel to the side hem. Just like that and that way when I'm at the blind hemmer, I can leave them in as I'm doing the hems. 
So I will we'll go now to the other side and do the same over there. And then I can turn the header at the zero line. And then I'm ready to put buckram in. Then it starts looking like a drapery. Okay, I'm down here now at the zero line of this silk drapery with the bump interlining. And I have a lot of extra fabric up here because we're doing a double six inch header. So next step is to fold over all the extra at the zero line right here. And you can see and feel that there's extra bump in there. So that'll get cut off once I press this at the line. So I'm just gonna get it nice and smooth and fold it right on the line and make sure all the lining and bump inner lining is turning that fold right here all the way in the fold. Don't want any, any, any I don't want any extra bubbles. Okay, that feels really good. So I'm gonna press it now. And then I'm gonna open it up and cut off all the extra bump. I'll leave the lining, this extra lining, but I'll cut off the bump at that fold line. And even though I cut this bump at the 112, the finish length, I cut it a little bit long, longer than that. Um, but also it stretches, so as I was smoothing it out, it stretched. And don't forget, I started the bottom of it one inch above the finish length. So I have an extra inch because of that and then extra just from stretching and from cutting it a little bit long. Okay, now without that in there, the pleats will be nice and smooth, but the bump will go all the way to the top so they'll be nice and full. So I'm gonna turn this back over and then I can draw a line at 12 inches to cut off the extra silk. And then we can put the buckram inside and get the header all set. So I'll just put a couple pins at 12 inches and then draw a line. And I did not have six inch buckram in stock. I thought I did, because I normally stock four, five, and six inch buckram. So I had to improvise and make my own six inch buckram since this is only two, two one width panels. That is not very much buckram. So I just made two pieces enough to do this project. I took some five inch buckram and made it, made it into six inch. So here we have a straight line now at 12 inches. Open that up. And then I could take my newly created six inch buckram. See, I just added a piece right here. So we have a five inch piece and then a two and a half inch piece. Overlap them and sew them together. And now you have a six inch piece. And I'm gonna, I always like to fold over a couple extra inches at the return and the overlap so that it's extra stiff in those areas. And then I can turn this over, um, this extra side hem here will get folded over. And then just tuck all of that underneath the buckram. So you want the buckram to fit all the way into the crease that you just made at the zero line. And then you want all the extra fabric to wrap around and just work on it until you get all of the excess smoothed away. And then, and then you'll press this part one more time. Then we can do the math on where we want the pleats to be. Since this is one width, it all fits on the table at once. So we can not only table it, we can put in the header and figure the pleats and get, the, get all of that part ready before we remove it and go to the hammer. 
I'm just feeling all over to make sure that fabric is all the way to the edge and the buckram is all the way to this edge. That looks good and it feels good. And so now I'm gonna press it and I leave it a tiny bit long on the corners because typically the side hem is gonna take up a little bit after the blind hemming. Whether you're hand stitching or blind hemming, it'll take up a tiny bit. So um, that's maybe an eighth of an inch longer at the corner. And then your length at the, at the bottom will be the same as the rest by doing that. That's just um, a little adjustment I have put into my system of tabling after years and years of coming up short on the corners. That takes care of that. So I'm just gonna pin this down temporarily so I can figure the pleats. And then I'm gonna mark the return over here. That's three and a half plus I'm gonna give it an eighth of an inch for take up. So if my return is three and a half, I want to mark it at three and five eighths. And then the overlap is two and a half. So same thing, I'm gonna mark it at two and five eighths. And then I'm gonna measure between these two pins and that'll be the amount of fabric left over for spaces and pleats. So I'll get the tape measure and the work order and we'll do some math. Okay, so I have a tape measure and I can mark the distance from this pin, which indicates the overlap on the leading edge. And then this pin over here, which indicates the return. So that is 44 and one quarter. So 44 and a quarter, there's my work order. That's the amount of fabric I have to work with to get my pleats and spaces. So typically, whatever my finish width up here is, I would typically add two inches to that, and that would be this number. And then I would subtract those two numbers, and then what's left over would be how much fabric we have left for pleats. This would be the spaces. So because I don't have a number here, the designer leaves that up to me when it's a stationary panel with one width, then it's up to me. I can pick whatever numbers I want. So I'm going to see what um, four spaces at four inches will look like in pleats. So four times four is 16. So if I do the math, 44 and a quarter minus 16, that leaves 28 and a quarter for the pleats. And if I have four spaces, then I want five pleats. So then I just calculate the 28 and a quarter divided by five, and that equals 5.65, which is five and five eighths, but I will get my little ruler Way over here and show you. I forgot to have it ready. Show you on my handy calculator ruler. So if we look for 5.65, the 0.65 is in between 5 eighths and 11 sixteenths, but 11 sixteenths is too much. So let's call it 5 and 5 eighths. So we're going to just change that to. 625, which is 5 and 5 eighths. So I can redo the math, 5.625 times 5. So really, I'm going to plate up to 28 and 1 eighth, which that's not enough to change this space up here because it's just a 16th of an inch different difference, which will work itself out when we mark the pleats. So I like that because I like five pleats per one width. And with the desired pleats that we're going for, which is these weird goblet pleats. Remember when we rewrote the work order, that was the description back here, weird goblet pleat, see picture attached. So that's the look we're going for. And a five and five eighth inch pleat is gonna look pretty with that pleat. Just from experience, I know that 
that's gonna look really nice. If it was a regular three finger pinch pleat, I would want a little bit more than that. But since it, we're going for that goblet look, this is gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna just pin these out and see if it works out. So here we have the first pin for the overlap leading edge. And then of course after that is gonna be the first pleat. So, so five and five eighths is remember on this ruler. Here's the half inch mark. So five eighths is the big one between three quarters and one half. Um, I know some people don't enjoy reading a ruler and this little guy helps to make sure you're at the right spot on a ruler. So there's one half, there's three quarter, the five eighths is right in between one half and three quarters. So that's five and five eighths. And then our spaces are four. So that's four inches. And just keep marking those until you get to the other end. And see if, see if the math works out. After this, we'll have one left. And it is just beyond the five and five eighths. So what I'm gonna do is give my return a little bit more room for take up because I think with all the layers in the bump, we might need that. So now we have three and three quarters for the return. And then all of the pleats are five and five eighths and all the spaces are four inches. And I think that's gonna be perfect. So now I'm gonna make sure there's a pin at each space at the bottom and one at each end here and here. And then I can turn all these pins and bury the tips so that as I'm working on the side hems and fan folding, these tips won't poke me or damage the fabric. And then I have one more to table. I like to get all the tabling done. Unless this was a really big, you know, eight-width panel, I would take this all the way through all the steps. But since this is two one-widths, I'm gonna go ahead and table the other one and get it to the same spot as this one and then finish both of them at the same time. So I'll just fold this up and hang it on the rack. So there's the front of the panel. I can't wait to see this finished with how the bump is gonna feel and look with the silk. So now I'm gonna just move all this over and I can collect all the pins all the way down there and then hang it up. Now that I have both panels tabled, I'm back at the hemmer and I'm going to do the side hems on these two panels. And the stitch is gonna need some adjustment for sure because it's much thicker now that I have the bump and the inner lining tabled into the side hems compared to just the thin layer of silk for the bottom hem. So I'm just gonna start by seeing what the stitch looks like. And immediately I can tell I need a lot less bite, so I'm gonna go towards the direction that says less. That's how this works. You want more bite or less bite. So I'm gonna go with less. And I'm gonna go tighter on the tension. And I'm just gonna keep turning until I'm happy with the stitch and then I'll go back and redo it. It's getting better. And this is why I leave the pins in as I sew. Okay, so it's already better. I'm gonna take this out and show you before I take out the stitch. It's not even, it's not even that bad from where I started, but you can see in the beginning here, the stitches are bigger than they need to be and they're grabbing more fabric underneath than necessary. And I can tell, but because you can see how far the stitch is away from the side hem. It's grabbing a lot of fabric with that curved needle. 
it's going in here and coming out way underneath. So that just means it's grabbing a lot. And then as I changed it to less and less and less, you can see how much closer the stitch is to the side hem. And I don't think it was going through all those layers, but I don't want to I don't want it to go through. So and it's it's definitely not as pretty up here as it is down here. So I'm going to take it out and start over. And I might still make a few more adjustments, but it's already a lot better. And this is the top, so I'm pulling up the header a little bit so I can get the stitch started up underneath the buckram. Okay, pull it up here so I can show you how nice it looks. This is like a warm blanket sitting on my lap with all the bump inside. I can feel the radiation. So I'm kind of um, scooping this fabric around underneath like this to make sure it doesn't slide out in between the pins. And I'm giving some tension between my hands doing the taut sewing method to keep this top layer of silk from pushing. And then I'm going to stop before I get to the bottom because it's too thick to go all the way down to the through the hem with all the extra layers of the lining hem and the silk hem. So we'll do the rest of that by hand and put a weight in the corner. Uh, let me show you how it looks. There's the face. There's no stitch going through the face. And on the back side, the stitching is really pretty and consistent and not too tight and not too loose. It's just right. I'm gonna leave a couple of pins in place until I get it all fan folded. So all the layers will stay together. And then pin the buckram back down. And I started on this side on purpose because this is the top. And so I always start, especially when I have to set the thread tension and the bite on a, on a new project. If you start from the top and go down, you'll um, have an easier time than starting on the other side where you're gonna start at the bottom and go up because you have more chance of ending up with extra fabric on the back if you go from the bottom to the top. So in this case, starting at the top and going to the bottom, it's easier to work out the stitch length and the tension in this direction. And now when I switch to the other side, it's all set and I, I will have an easier time and not end up with extra fabric at the top. So now I'm at the bottom and I'm gonna start right above the hemline, which is right here. I'm just gonna take out that first pin and keep a little tension between the fabric between each hand again. Okay, so now I have one more panel to do the blind stitching on the side hems and then do the hand stitching at the corners and then I can fan fold, which I'm excited to do. That's when it starts coming alive. So I think I'll get the other one and do that first and then I'll do all the hand stitching. Okay, we're getting close to fan folding these, but first I'm gonna put the weights in the corners and do the hand stitching on all of the corners on the bottom and then the corners at the top also. 
Then we will fan fold and then we can sew the pleats and then pinch them and then tack them and hook them and then bag them. Then they're done. Sounds like a lot more steps, but all of those go pretty fast. Okay, that looks good. And now I'm gonna start the fan folding. Feel for that return over here and then check that the whole length of this fold is measuring out to six and three eighths and make adjustments. Okay, so I'm gonna just continue stitching these pleats. There's only five per panel, so four left on this one and five on the next one. I just wanna get a tack at the bottom of this pleat right here, leaving the middle sticking out so it will keep this shape. 